so I think like, you know, when I say low risk, I mean like compared to like a venture back startup is really hard and it takes a really long time. And it might, even if it's successful, you still might not make any money. Like I have, you know, Zola has taken, uh, again, um, at this point, two over $200 million in capital in. And so if someone comes along and buys that business for $199 million tomorrow, you know, I don't see a dollar of that, right? Yeah. And so, you know, hopefully it will eventually exit for much more than that, but it's a very risky business, takes a very long time. Um, you know, all of our cash flow positive businesses, like we own them outright, the majority of them, or we have trusted partners that we're in partnership with 50, 50 or whatever. And, you know, I could probably do absolutely nothing I could just like go to the beach from this point on. And in all likelihood, um, you know, all these companies would take care of my needs and, you know, more more than I would ever need in my life. Like, you know, I will do much more than that, but like that the, the initial positive momentum and incentives are already in place. Yeah. And and those could decay over time. But in general, if you have good people responsible for things and they get a share of the upside, then then they tend to keep, you know, things going in the right direction. Right. The incentives are aligned. I love that. Um Xavier, I, I feel like, you know, we before we even pressed record on this, you know, you kind of gave us the background, like, on um, like, you know, you've been media trained and like, I've, I've watched plenty of your YouTube videos now just to kind of prep for this call at this point. Um, and so I'm sure most podcasts you do, you're chatting about Zola, you're chatting about um, Better World Books, you're chatting about like how you're thinking about setting up this conglomerate. This might sound like almost somewhat of like a meta question, I guess, but like, is there like a question that you wish that I kind of asked you today or, or like throughout this podcast that you personally really enjoy um, or like find that it's like pretty influential to like who you are as a person, but you just don't like talk about a lot publicly. I know it's, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's an awesome question. Um, So I'll give you, I'll give you two. Um, So, um, so I would say one is what is your mission and the other is what is your essence. And I, I ask, um, I ask what is your essence a lot as a um, interview question. And uh, so I, uh, I always find it um, at first stumps someone and they look at me a little funny and then they engage in intense self-reflection for some t- somewhere between five seconds to a minute. And then they usually give me a really interesting answer. And so um, I've actually never been asked this question. Uh, so I need to reflect on it for a second because uh, I just shot it from the hip to myself. Um, but I would, uh, what I would say is that my, my essence is uh, to to see around corners, and that's what I spend a, like. That's what I will bring to an organization that um, most people will will not bring, but is usually really valuable. Is seeing the whole possibility set of both what could happen if we if things go right, and what could happen if things go wrong, and then trying to bring those back to the present and both mitigate the the downside risks and and maximize the the upside potential. 